Gulf Cooperation Council, which is crowned with a journey of almost 40 years of achievements in various fields in serving the Gulf citizen and achieving aspiration so that it has become a unique regional block and a model to be emulated. The emergence of the image came as a collective Gulf block and it formed a unique model to be emulated by regional blocks. The idea of establishing the council dates back to 1975 when the late Emir of the State of Kuwait, Sheikh Jabr al-Ahmed al-Jabr al-Sabah, may God have mercy on him, was the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister on a visit to Abu Dhabi on May 16, 1975. After lengthy talks with the President of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, they issued a joint statement calling for the formation of a joint ministerial committee headed by the two countries' foreign ministers, which meets at least twice a year. In May 1976, Sheikh Jabr al-Ahmed, may God rest his soul, called for the establishment of a Gulf unit to achieve cooperation in all political, economic, educational and information fields, and to create the kind of unity based on sound and solid foundations for the benefit and stability of the peoples of the region. The Gulf bilateral and multilateral positions in support of the launch of the Cooperation Council continued until February 4, 1981, in the Saudi capital Riyadh. It was announced that the six countries would form a cooperation, council and a general secretariat between them and hold periodic meetings for the purpose. In implementation of the statement of the foreign ministers of the six countries in Riyadh, a committee of experts met in Riyadh on February 24th and 25th, 1981, to lay down the integrated system for what was agreed upon regarding the Cooperation Council and discuss the draft statute of the Council. The foreign ministers of the GCC countries decided to hold another meeting for them in the Omani capital Muscat in March 1981 and they issued a statement on the occasion. Ambassadors of the Arab countries were informed on this day and clarified the nature of the Gulf Cooperation Council, its role in the region and its link to the comprehensive Arab cooperation. Since its establishment in 1981, the GCC has held 40 Gulf summits in the presence of leaders and heads of member states, six of which were hosted by the state of Kuwait. During previous summits, all regional and international issues of common interest were discussed among the Gulf states, within a framework based on the spirit and principles of Gulf unity. The first summit conference of the six Gulf states was held in Abu Dhabi when the statute of the council was signed, which emphasized in its fourth article that deepening and strengthening of the ties, connection and aspects of cooperation between citizens of the GCC states. The starting points were clear in the preamble of the charter, which emphasized the special relations between the six countries common features and similar systems based on the Islamic faith, belief in a common destiny and unity of purpose, and that the cooperation between them only served the lofty goals of the Arab nations and the Council statute. The Charter began with being fully aware of the ties of special relations, common characteristics and similar systems founded on the creed of Islam, which bind them and desiring to affect coordination, cooperation and integration between them in all fields in pursuit of goal of strengthening cooperation and reinforcement of links between them and an endeavor to complement efforts already begun in all essential areas 
that concern the people and realize their hopes for a better future on the path to unity of the states and in conformity with the Charter of the League of Arab States which calls for the realization of closer relations and stronger bonds in order to channel their efforts to reinforce and save Arab and Islamic causes. Within this framework, Article 4 of the Charter sets out the basic objective of the GCC as first to affect coordination, integration and interconnection between member states in all fields in order to achieve unity between them. Second, to deepen and strengthen relations, ties and areas of cooperation prevailing between the peoples in various fields. Third, to formulate similar regulations in various fields including economic and financial affairs, commerce, customs and communication, education and culture. And to stimulate significant and technological progress in the fields of industry, mining, agriculture, water and animal resources, to establish scientific research, to establish joint ventures and encourage cooperation between the private sector for the good of their people. 1981, the second summit. The leaders adopted the Unified Economic Pact, which aimed at removing barriers among member states and gearing up all resources for the well-being and prosperity of the GCC people. 1982, the third summit. The draft economic agreement in this summit, lifting trade, travel and customs barriers among the GCC nations reviewed the progress made on common defense and security pacts. The GCC leaders reached an agreement on a $2.1 billion fund, which is based on the state of Kuwait and called the Gulf Investment Corporation. 1983, the fourth summit. During this session, the Supreme Council reviewed political and economic ties and coordination in defense affairs among the member states. 1984, the fifth summit, hosted at the invitation of Kuwait's late Emir, Sheikh Jabir al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Sabah, the leaders approved strategies and common policies covering agriculture, industrial development, environment, protection, and education. 1985, the sixth summit, the Supreme Council agreed on allowing GCC citizens to do the business in their member states providing them with access to loans from banks and industrial development funds. The Council also discussed the issue of the Iraq-Iran war in light of the recent developments and dangerous escalation and the threat that it poses to the security of the entire region. 1986, the seventh summit. The leaders approved a security strategy and sanctioned the Defense Minister's recommendations on military cooperation. They agreed to set up a GCC common market by standardizing customs tariffs. 1987, the eighth summit. The Council approved the Comprehensive Security Strategy and recommendations of the GCC Defense Ministers on military cooperation with an emphasis on the importance of self-construction for member states to support defense capabilities. The petroleum loan system was also approved among the member states and a mandate to start formal negotiations with economic groups, especially the European Community. 1988, the Ninth Summit. The six head states covered the possible future's adoption of a unified tariff system regarded by the many as fundamental of the GCC's negotiations for a trade pact with the European Economic Community. 1989, the 10th Summit. The Supreme Council examined the development of the Council's march in its all aspects and means of supporting it. The leaders also reviewed the security situations in the region in light of the stage of communications on Security Council Resolution 598, the situation in the occupied Arab territories and the dimensions of the Palestinian uprising. 1990, the 11th Summit. 
the summit convened to condemn the Iraq's regime's invasion of the state of Kuwait. The member states announced that they would stand with the state of Kuwait in its plight, its absolute support and its full solidarity with its people and government in their crisis until complete liberation. 1991, the 12th summit. The summit in Kuwait was the first to be held since the liberation of the nation. The GCC leaders discussed regional developments in the Gulf following the liberation of the state of Kuwait and the request from the Iraqi regime to speed up the implementation of the Security Council resolutions related to its aggression in accordance with Security Council Resolution 687. 1992, the 13th summit. The summit commended International Resolution No. 773, which affirmed the Security Council's guarantee of the inviolability of the international borders between the state of Kuwait and Iraq, and welcomed the steps taken by the United Nations Commission to demarate the borders on the land between the two countries. The summit also confirms its full backing of the UAE in its presence through peaceful meanings of regaining sovereignty over its islands of Abu Musa and Greater and Lesser Tombs. 1993, the 14th summit. This summit welcomed the signing of the Declaration of Principles Agreement between the Palestine Liberation Organization and the Israeli occupation as a first step on the road to reaching a just, comprehensive and lasting solution to the Palestinian cause. The summit also renewed its demand for the Iraqi regime to respect the terms of the ceasefire with Kuwait and to implement all relevant Security Council resolutions and the provisions of Resolution 687. 1994, the 15th summit. GCC leaders examined the phenomenon of extremism and terrorism and confirmed the Council's complete rejections and condemnations of these practices in all their forms, motives and starting points. 1997, the 16th summit. The summit discussed the issue of proliferation of weapons of mass destructions in the Middle East and the threat they pose to security and peace calling to make the region free of all types of these weapons. 1996, the 17th summit. GCC heads of state discussed areas of coordination and joint cooperation between member states and reviewed ministerial committee decisions in the field of military affairs, security affairs, economic affairs, legal affairs, and media affairs. 1997, the 18th Summit. The Supreme Council approved regulations for preserving and developing wildlife, dealing with radioactive materials and waste management, as well as the procedures that must be adhered to in transporting hazardous waste between the GCC states. 1998, the 19th Summit. The summit witnessed the presence of the major regional and international personalities such as the late South African President Nelson Mandela, former UN Security General Kofi Annan, Dr. Ismat Abdul Majid, former Security General of the Arab League, and Dr. Izzeddin Al-Iraqi, former Security General of the Organization of the Islamic Conference. Also former French President Jacques Chirac, sent a televised message via satellite in which he affirmed France's friendship and appreciation for the prominent role that the GCC plays at the international level. This summit, which was called the Preparation Summit for the Next Century, discussed the overall developments in the political and security situation regionally and internationally. During this period, it was agreed on to hold a semi-annual conservative meeting for the leaders of the countries of the Cooperation Council for the Arab Gulf States between the previous and subsequent summits, and the decisions to develop the Peninsula Shield Force was also approved. 1999, the 20th summit. The Gulf Head of States reached a deal to unify their customs tariffs in March 2005 
resolving a last-minute dispute that threatened their 18-year-old ambition to create a regional trading block. The Higher Council approved the custom tariffs and the implementation of the customs union from March 2005. The Year 2021 Summit the GCC leaders signed the Joint Defense Agreement and urged the Specialized Economic Committees to speed up the agreement on the rules, regulations, and procedures necessary to establish a customs union among the member states. The leaders also called to adopt a common validator for the currencies of the GCC countries as the first step to achieving the Unified Economic Agreement, as well as work on unifying the currency to be complementary to the desired economic integration between them. 2001, the 22nd Summit During this period, the bombings of 11 September 2001 in the United States were condemned, and the support of the International Coalition to Eliminate Terrorism, led by the United States of America, was emphasized. The economic agreement was also adopted to replace the Unified Economic Improvement previously in 1981, and the introduction of the Customs Union was approved as the 1st of January 2003. 2002, the 23rd Summit The summit witnessed the agreement to follow up the implementation of the timetable for the Monetary Union and the executive measures taken by the member states to adopt the US dollar as the common stabilizer for the currencies of the GCC countries at the current stage and link their exchange rates to it. 2003, the 24th Summit The issue of the war in Iraq dominated the discussions at the summit and the Gulf leaders affirmed their full solidarity with the Iraqi people in their ordeal. Subsequently, the summit agreed to establish a customs information center at the headquarters of the General Secretariat, which links customs administrations to the GCC states automatically. 2004, the 25th summit, the Zayed summit. This summit came about a month after the demise of Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, president of the UAE, and was named the Zayed summit in appreciation of the late deceased role in promoting the march of the GCC. In this summit, the GCC leaders decided to extend the insurance umbrella to retirement and social insurance institutions to cover the GCC citizens working in the other GCC countries. The 2005-26 summit, King Fahed summit. The meeting was named as the King Fahed Summit in recognition of the late Saudi King Fahed bin Abdul Aziz's various and generous contributions. The Council endorsed a document on standard trade policy aimed at unifying foreign trade policies for the GCC countries so as to enable them to deal with the outside world as a single economic bloc. 2006, the 27th Summit. This summit was called Sheikh Jabir Summit in honor of the late Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah and his numerous contributions regionally and globally. The GCC trademarks law has been adopted in the summit as a mandatory law that regulates registrable trademarks, the procedures for their registrations, the duration of the trademark protection as well as the procedures for delisting and transferring their ownership. The 2007-28 Summit The GCC Supreme Council announced the launch of the Gulf Common Market as of January 1, 2008. The leaders came up with a historic decision stating that all GCC nationals will be treated equally in terms of rights to travel employment and education, as well as economic, financial, and investment opportunities in all member countries on a par with the nationals of each country. 2008, the 29th Summit The GCC leaders approved the Monetary Union Agreement, the first legal document on the formation of the Gulf Monetary Union and using Khaliji as their proposed common currency name 
but the question of the location of the central bank remained unresolved. The summit also discussed the repercussions of the global financial crisis at the time and its economic impacts and means of coordination between member states to take necessary measures to reduce its negative effects. 2009, the 30th summit. The GCC leaders concluded the summit with an agreement on the monetary union. The monetary union was comprised of four of the six GCC members as the UAE and Oman opted out the agreement. The summit also supported Saudi Arabia in its fight against the Houthi militias. 2010, the 31st summit. The summit decided to allow Gulf companies to open branches for them in the GCC countries and to apply complete equality in treating the branches of these companies as the branches of the national companies. 2011, the 32nd summit. The GCC leaders welcomed the proposal submitted by the late Saudi King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud regarding the transition from the stage of cooperation to the stage of union and directed the formation of a specialized body to study the proposal. The leaders also agreed to adopt the civil ID as proof of identity for the citizens of the GCC countries in the public and private sectors in all member states. 2012, the 33rd Summit. This summit witnessed the approval of the decisions of the Joint Defense Council and welcomed the establishment of the Unified Military Command that would coordinate, plan, and command the additional and assigned land, sea, and air forces. 2013, the 34th Summit. The GCC leaders agreed to establish the Unified Military Leadership of the GCC countries to instruct the Joint Defense Council to take the necessary measures to activate it and condemned the Syrian regime's continued aggression against the Syrian people. 2014, the 35th Summit. During this period, the decisions and recommendations of the interior ministers regarding the establishment of the Gulf Police Service based in Abu Dhabi were approved. The GCC leaders also approved the adoption of the Declaration of Human Rights for the Arab Gulf States. 2015, the 36th Summit. In this summit, the leaders of the Gulf States ratified the decisions of the Joint Defense Councils in the 14th session regarding the areas of joint military action. The Supreme Council stressed out its firm positions in rejecting terrorism and extremism in all forms and manifestations and drying up its sources of financing, affirming that commitment to fighting the deviant ideology on which terrorist groups are based. The Supreme Council also reaffirmed the need to deal decisively with the dangerous phenomenon of terrorism, praising the efforts of the member states in the regard at all international and regional levels resulting in Riyadh declaration. 2016 37th Summit The summit commended the signing of agreement between Saudi Arabia and the UAE to establish a coordination council between the two countries. The GCC leaders stressed that the establishment of this council is a tributary of joint work among member states and strengthens its march in the interest of their countries and peoples. 2017 38th Summit the summit discussed various topics including the battle against the terror and extremism, the war in Yemen, the Syrian crisis and the Palestinian case. The summit also called for developing the performance of the GCC and upgrading the level of cooperation to reach economic and integration in 2025. 2018, the 39th summit. The Gulf leaders expressed their satisfaction with the progress made in implementation, the vision of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz, of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, to promote joint Gulf action, which was approved by the Supreme Council in its 36th session in December 2015. They assigned the relevant bodies to redouble efforts 
to complete the remaining steps, including completing the components of the economic unity within the frameworks of the Cooperation Council and the Joint Defense and Security Systems. 2019, the 40th Summit The summit concluded with an emphasizing the necessity to protect the maritime of the Arabian Gulf from any threats as the Council notes measures taken by Saudi Arabia to protect its oil facilities, which stems from the Kingdom's keenness of a stable oil market, both for producing and consuming countries. The summit also underlined the importance of achieving economic unity and custom integration, which could serve the Gulf's political and security coordination in light of the regional and international variables. 2021, the 41 Summit In light of the exceptional global health and political conditions, which was the countries of the Gulf Cooperation have not known before, and the anticipation for the announcement of the Gulf Reconciliation. Today, Riyadh, the capital of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, hosts the 41st Summit of the Gulf Cooperation Council for the third year in a row amid context of intensifying regional insecurities. This summit will also mark the start of the fifth decade of the GCC's existence, acknowledging that insecurity in the region is deepening by the day. The GCC's member states seem to have agreed to set aside their differences and unit behind their common interests. By recognizing that conflicts in the neighboring countries have the potential to shift the balance of power in the region, the GCC is demonstrating that it is a force to be reckoned with, both in the Arab world and internationally, as well as setting an example for other countries seeking to form effective regional entities. Thanks to the efforts done by the State of Kuwait before the summit, the atmosphere at the GCC December Gulf Forum Minister virtual meeting was relatively positive. Last December, the State of Kuwait announces through its Foreign Minister, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Nasser Mohammed Sabah, who said that fruitful talks were held recently in regards to achieving reconciliation and supporting Gulf and Arab solidarity and stability. He stated in a public address on Kuwait TV that within the framework of reconciliation efforts previously led by the late Emir, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, and in continuation of the efforts currently being carried out by His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, the Emir of Kuwait, and President Donald Trump of the friendly United States of America, to resolve the crisis. Fruitful discussions took place recently in which all parties affirmed their keenness on Gulf and Arab solidarity and stability and to reach a final agreement that would achieve the aspiration of lasting solidarity between their countries and achieve what's good for their people. It is worth mentioning that His Highness the Amir Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah expressed his great happiness and satisfaction with the historic achievement and constructive efforts that have been made recently to solve the Gulf dispute. His Highness the Emir said with appreciation to the constructive efforts of late Emir, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, who led this effort since the first day of the dispute and who laid the foundation for the settlement, so this effort remains in depth of our conscience and the pages of our history. His Highness also extended his congratulations and appreciations to the leaders of the Gulf states for achieving this historic step and expressed gratitude to all those supported the mediation efforts undertaken by the state of Kuwait. The GCC countries were able to accomplish many achievements during their long journeys in many areas of joint cooperation. In light of this, the Council supports the unity, stability and sovereignty of Iraq, supports the Palestinian cause, supports the unity and stability of Yemen, and is keen on the Syrian situation as well as the Somali issue. The Council also supports the Libyan people and their aspirations, and condemns the prosecutions of Muslim minorities in Myanmar. 
there are achievements made at the economic, political, cultural and social levels and all levels and fields noting the work of the ministerial committees throughout the year to achieve the interest of the GCC states and meet the aspiration of their people. The Joint Military Action has received the attention of their Majesties and Highnesses, leaders of the Gulf Cooperation Council states, since the beginning of the Council's blessed march, out of the firm of conviction of the unity of purpose and destiny, in addition to the facts of geography and common history. Based on the request of the Ministerial Council of the Cooperation Council, the first meeting of Chiefs of Staff of the Armed Forces of the GCC countries was held in the city of Riyadh in 1981 to discuss areas of military cooperation and a number of recommendations were submitted to build and strengthen military cooperations among the armed forces of the GCC countries. Starting from the date and within four decades and under the result guidance of the defense ministers of the countries of the Cooperation Council, many studies, regulations and strategies have been approved that include many areas of joint military actions. These decisions were based on a methodological foundations and specific scientific foundations, taking into account that available capabilities, defense requirements, sources of threat and their size, the various forms of diversity of risk and all the challenges that may face the GCC countries. In the third session of the Supreme Council of the Gulf Cooperation Council states, the Council approved the establishment of a joint military defense force, the Peninsula Shield Force, which was the first of its kind in the region, with an army from all GCC countries in 1992. The Venezuela Shield Force was based on the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, near King Khalid military city at Hafr al Batin, and had one infantry bridge of 5,000 men from all the GCC member states. And in 2003, the strategy of the GCC countries was adopted to combat extremism associated with terrorism. And in 2004, the member states signed an agreement to combat terrorism. As of March 2011, the Peninsula Shield Force has about 40,000 troops and continues to have their permanent base at King Khalid Military City near Hafr al -Batun. And in the 34th session of the Supreme Council, the Joint Peninsula Shield Forces Command was developed to be the Unified Grand Command of the Unified Military Command of the Cooperation Council and to be called the Command of the Peninsula Shield Forces. Work is also underway to complete the arrangement of manpower and armament. Realizing from their majesties and highnesses, the leaders of the GCC states, that the economic growth and prosperity enjoyed by the GCC countries can only be achieved and developed in a safe and stable environment. And based on the firm principle that the security of the GCC states is indivisible, the high instructions were issued to the Ministries of Interior to communicate and coordinate to hold a meeting. They have the right to discuss requirements and mechanism for coordination and security cooperation among member states. In the field of media cooperation between the GCC states, the media code of conduct has been completed. The media strategy set and the cooperation in the field of foreign media, television, radio and press cooperation and the news agencies have been completed. The march of joint educational work began before the establishment of the Cooperation Council through the Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States, which was established in 1975 under the supervision of the Ministers of Education. The development of education in the region is the later period and the emergence of many higher education institutions independent of the ministries of education, such as colleges and universities, bodies of technical education and applied training, and the establishment of the ministries of higher education, led the focus of the office's program and projects mainly on public education. The joint educational work process gained a strong inputs when the Supreme Council took another set of important decisions which had a direct impact of the adoptions of many cooperation programs and projects. 
within the unified plan for appropriate programs and projects to achieve what was mentioned in the study of comprehensive development of education and the views of the advisory body. The Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States completed the implementation of the General Education Development Project, which consisted of more than 30 programs dealing with five main subjects in general education, which are curricula and education, professionalization of education, education systems, technology and education, and community partnership. Cooperation in the field of health between the countries of the Cooperation Council began in mid-70s of the 20th century, when meetings were held between health ministers in the Gulf states. This developed into establishment of a committee of health ministers in the GCC countries, which held its first meeting in January 2014 in the state of Kuwait. Considering that the health field represents an important sector in the Council's work, Subsequent efforts have come to add to what has been accomplished before. The health ministers of the Gulf Cooperation countries continued their periodic meetings without interruptions, the most recent of which was the emergency meeting of health ministers on July 16, 2020, which discussed the most prominent developments regarding the coronavirus and its outbreak maps and its effects, reviewing the outputs of the committees and working groups, the latest treatment plans, and the latest developments in the work of the vaccine procedure. According to the GCC Statistical Center, which has established a special platform to monitor the pandemic's development since last March, the number of people infected with COVID-19 throughout the GCC countries until December 2020 reached more than 1,100,000 cases, of whom surpasses a million cases were cured and nearly 10,000 of them died. The countries bordering the Arabian Gulf's western shore are considered to be of pivotal importance by virtue of their strategic location and economic influence. This is borne out by the proportion of the world trade that takes place in these states and that fact that more than a third of the world's proven oil reserves are located here. The latter fact alone makes the Gulf region enormously important in the global economic development. In this chapter, we review the history of economic cooperation and integration between member states within the Gulf Cooperation Council, the most significant achievements in this regard, including establishing a customs union and the progress made towards introducing a single GCC currency. The GCC states operate as one economic conglomerate rather than independently. Such factors include their geographic proximity and shared customs and traditions. The shared culture between the six countries has given rise to similar legislative frameworks, thus facilitating the development of integrated regulatory frameworks and enabling economic and financial integration. The six countries signed the Unified Economic Agreement in 1981, passing through the 2001 Economic Agreement, the Monetary Union, the Single Currency, Trade Cooperation, the Customs Union, efforts to establish the common Gulf market, and the strengthening of the economic citizenship. The GCC's ambitious economic integration project dates back to the very beginnings of the organization. In November 1981, the GCC leaders signed an agreement on economic unity in Riyadh, laying out a comprehensive framework and a time frame for economic integration. Among the many aspects covered by the agreement were regulating capital flows, the cross-border movement of individuals, cooperation around the issues of transport, trade, technology, and development, as well as financial and physical cooperation. In December 2001, the GCC leader ratified an updated version of this agreement at their summit in Masbat. The updated document included articles that were more in keeping with national and international economic trends, facilitating the formation of the GCC's customs union, a joint GCC market, and the yet-to-be-instituted common currency. The 2001 agreement thus consisted a vital advance in the GCC's progress 
towards full economic integration. By the end of 2008, the GCC state has successfully established a customs union with streamlined procedures, custom legislations, and standards. The economies of the Gulf Cooperation Council states similar to the international community and the global economy as a whole are going through a critical stage since the beginning of 2020 as a result of the repercussion of the COVID-19 pandemic which led to economic, financial, commercial and social problems. As part of the global economy, the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council faced economic and social challenges affected by the economic, financial and social developments that the world witnessed, especially by the repercussions from the performance of the global economy in the most of its sectors during the first half of 2020, which reflected negatively in general, the economies of the GCC's countries led to a contraction of commercial and economic activity during this period. However, it began to recover in the second half of this year, similar to what happening in the global economy. The economies of the countries of the Gulf Cooperation Council have been affected by the economic, financial and social developments that the world witnessed in 2020 that led to a decline in the performance of the global economy. Accordingly, the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic from shrinking the total output of the global economy, the decline in oil prices, the decline of international trade and tourism, the decline in financial markets and the high unemployment rates also reflected on the performance of the economies of the GCC countries that witnessed a contraction in the macroeconomic performance and in the most of the productive and service sectors. The most important crisis of the decline in oil prices in the global market to unprecedented levels and the disruption of many vital sectors to confront the COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic was a good prelude, on the other hand, to revive some of the issues that were pending for the period of the GCC countries, such as the Gulf train and the single currency, in addition to the signing of new agreements and protocols related to food security, trade, industry among the Gulf states. The news of the meetings between representatives of Gulf governments became interesting as the discussions of the COVID-19 pandemic and what is related to is increased significantly in recent times and sometimes surpass it. This has emerged more since the receipt of the new Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council from Kuwait, Dr. Naif al Hajraf, who appears to be making a redoubled efforts to revive the Council, develop its work and follow up on the implementation. In light of this, the General Secretariat of the Cooperation Council held many workshops and meetings, such as the future of renewable and new energy in the GCC countries and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Kuwait sought to crystallize the idea of the Council in recognition of the feeling of the late Amir Sheikh Jabir al-Ahmad al-Jabir al-Subah, may God rest his soul, of the importance of cohesion and cohesion as a feature of the peoples and government of the GCC countries. The march of the Council has witnessed over the past years many great achievements in various fields which have reflected on the Gulf citizens and fulfilled his aspiration of all economic, political, military and security levels and on the regional and international arenas. Through these accomplishments, the Council was able to represent a strong framework for collective security and defense to protect the gains of the Gulf entity and address the dangers it faced, and it has played an influential role in managing crisis in the region. Thanks to the efforts of His Highness the Emir Sheikh Nawaf al Ahmed al Jabr Sabah, following the steps of the late Emir of the country, Sheikh Sabah al Ahmed al Jabr Sabah, may God rest his soul, and the state of Kuwait for the Gulf reunification and the process of the Gulf Cooperation Council was not affected by any dispute. The homogeneity between the countries of cooperation contributed to adopting unified position towards many political issues, focusing on the principles of good neighborness and non-interference in internal affairs. The Gulf region's harmony also furthered respecting the sovereignty of each country over its lands and resources, 
and adopting the principle of peaceful dialogue as a means of settling disputes, which gave the Cooperation Council a great deal of credibility as an effective international organization in the region. The Council faced many challenges at the level of foreign policy represented in the cohesion of the GCC states during the Iraq-Iran war, as well as during the ordeal of the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait and the great efforts of the Council and the coalition countries in the liberation. The people of Gulf are optimistic about the Council's march, and they believe that this march won the admiration of the world, which has come to treat the Council as the influential and effective bloc in the regional events and developments. The Gulf citizen feels and it affected by the extent of coordination and cooperation between the GCC states by giving him freedom of movement with a civil card in all GCC countries, in addition to the Gulf citizens' enjoyment of health services, freedom of ownership and unified customs tariffs, including the Council's Unified Economic Agreement, which are real gains for the Gulf citizen.